So let's see. Uh, here. Division 5, guys. Playoffs, that is. Wait, you, you might get flashbanged. These are the teams. Only Chance versus Boss Babies. What do we see tonight? We have uh, Holy Chicken. Asked me about if I wanted to cast it. And the bracket can be found here. Division 5 Cup. This is the bracket. Uh, it's the first round. And uh, ourselves, like... The team with Nomi and Uli and so on. We will also have our first playoff match on... Friday, I think, maybe? If everything works out. Like, as I said, like, everything is, like, kinda... Like, we are we're having scrims and we have to do the... The qualifications, the Germany qualifiers, the tie breaks, so like everything is kind of happening in a very short period of time now. We're trying to figure out. Do it. But yeah, this is supposed to be a best of five, I believe. And wait, who is... So only chance are going to be on the left side. The boss baby's on the right. I don't know if I have anything prepared here. This one maybe. Only chance and then boss babies. We'll see how that looks when we are in game. <coughs> um, okay, they are almost ready, guys. I honestly wait, maybe I can find out who's supposed to be favorite. Let me see. Division 5. So according to the seeding, only chance got third place and boss baby's fifth place. So it's not a very big gap. But uh, maybe only chance are the favorites. Yo Alkan, thanks for the eight months resub. Thank you very much. Welcome back. Uh Okay, I think they're ready. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Always ready. Good luck and fun, guys. No need to wait for me. Right, so let me see. Let me do my, my scuffed setup here. This, 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 this. Isn't that amazing, guys? Wow. <laughs> Uh, the spacing is a bit uh, <laughs> the spacing is a bit scuffed, but we leave it like that for now. All right, Division Five. Fuck, I can't check profiles now, right? I wanted to have an overview how um, how the rankings are looking like. Can maybe do it after first map. All right, Garden of Terror. Starting with the Brightwing Bun. What Stromlink rank is Division 5? Yeah, I don't know. That's uh, something I wanted to find out, but... Now, uh... Now we have to wait. Why is the... Let's bring this a bit closer. I wonder how it's gonna look in-game though. Maybe it's fine. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Hogger. Hogger and Bridling. This looks like GM buns. These guys are trying hard. Ooh, Muradin. 
That is uh, a bit special. Maybe there's a Muradin main. Ray main is also spicy ban. That leaves us with Lucio in Genji, Diablo, Blaze, Dehaka, Rega. One of these heroes is uh, getting first picked in three, two, one, now. Okay. Ah! It's something else and off time. So Valor first pick on Garden. Okay. For the Alliance above all. Instantly Anduin. We don't know the pairing with it yet. Interesting, interesting. So is it going to be Vala Hyper Carry with triple melee? Or maybe Vala with double support? Ah. Need There's the blaze. We might see a Dehaka response if... Actually, Lorik... Lorik is also in, so maybe they skip the offlane for now. You can get away with other offlanes as well later on, if you really want to. Let's see how they draft around the Vala. There is so there's the Dehaka, and there's one support. And the Aurel kind of makes me think that they want the second support. That's just my, my first gut feeling, though. Might not. Maybe, I mean, <coughs> Vala Aurel goes uh, fine together, like if they stick on the lane. It's kind of juicy together. We see a Hanzo ban, so they don't suspect the second support. Otherwise, you wouldn't ban the Hanzo, because you wouldn't care. do we ban? What are we scared of? A light bomb carrier? Like Genji. Here we go again. Chromi? Kind of nice into our real drafts. Johanna, kind of nice into Vala. Well, I mean, Johanna is good anyways, right? But... And it's not... not uh, it's not gonna be triple melee, and it's not going to be double support. We get Varian and Junkrat. So they just really wanted the Aurel, I guess. Varian and Junkrat. Does, does anyone like the Varian here? I'm very torn on it. I don't like it too much. They have Banka, they have an Anduin pull. I yearn for Actually, they go triple melee. The boss babies. They are feeling the... They are feeling the triple melee. <laughs> I mean, maybe Varian is gonna destroy them all. Like, he does have shield break into Johanna. Your carries, it's okay. Hmm. Level 16 and 20 Varia, yeah, 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 that's true. The banners are very, very strong. <coughs> hmm. And there's only, only Chromie now in terms of damage dealing. Might be fine. Now the question is, you go, you go loop, right? Yeah. You could also go abduct on Imperius. You have pretty good setup, like Jana can set it up or Blaze. Abducting Varian might be kind of useful. <laughs> Unlikely that you get anyone else. If you do, you probably instantly win the fight. I mean. 
forget about the Haka, but squishy as that is. Someone is loading slowly, and now it's not me. I guarantee you. Someone is slow loading very slowly. Okay, we're we are getting there, we're getting there. One, one more time, one more push, guys. Anduin, I think, was the last one to get the job done. So let me see, the overlay, uh, this is okay, right? Yeah, we just leave it like that. It's, uh, it's uh, as good as it gets for this uh, sc scuffed uh, stream setup. All right. On the left side, the only chance. Holy Chicken on Junkrat, Alatis on Dehaka, Faust on Aurel, Ale Alexander on Vala, and the Princess is playing Varian. And on the right side, the Boss Babies, the Feuerrabe on Imperius. We have Harold on Blaze, Chenli on the Anduin, Fluttershy playing Chromie, and Kane. He's on uh, Johanna. Blaze already starting to poke top. Imperius poking bottom as well. Don't see that too often. It's happening though. Probably with uh, Vision on level 1. Wait, let me slightly lower this again because uh, we already know it's going to happen otherwise. Alright, now I can move. Chromi Vision missed everyone in this bush, so they're coming for Imperius. Made it out though, on time. I trap? Wait, isn't Chromi. Oh, he missed the lick. Should have waited a moment for the Varian slow. So maybe Chromi dash if. That lick hits, because then you can walk with her to the left. Blaze doing a fantastic job on top. Art cam, by the way, has been taken. Ideally, you get this easy cam to then de-push the hard camp here. It's free, guys. It's a, it's a secret tech that you can do in your Storm League games as well. See Junkrat catching the wave. Vala Aurel handing, uh, holding hands together. That's kind of what they need to do. And we see the easy camp now hitting the hard camp. There's not much pressure anyways, right? Because no one really pushed with this. Junkrat was just catching the wave. But if they push with it, it's so much easier when you have the easy camp timed. And because, uh, because the way they drafted, it was kind of hard for them to do the hard camp. I guess Blaze could have started it. Uh, but like Imper Imperius is very, very slow until level 7. <clears throat> if he goes AA Cleave, he can help at the easies or, or camps in general, right? But until then, like you see Chromie undoing together. Takes a little bit of time. First seed on the left side. Should be a free one for the only chance. It's very hard to invade this position, and actually, we see the hard camp being getting taken on the other side of the map. So you just start capping once you figured out the puzzle of killing the defenders or tanking them. And guys, it is Garden of Terror, so we might get to level 20 because this map has no win condition. <coughs> And speaking of uh, hard camp push, the boss babies are doing exactly that. And the problem is that no one is behind the gate. So they're all trying to walk in from the side here. It's unpleasant though. Look, you can see Vala and Aurel not walking together anymore. Not holding hands, which makes them a lot weaker. Now finally re reunited. 
And Vala is the uh, only hero that has depush here. So her being late. Oh my god, the chromie damage. There you see why Aurel struggles or can struggle into the chromie. Lost the whole wall. Holy chicken. Setting up some traps. Looking for a taunt, but it's very deep. Even if they taunt him here, he probably doesn't die. I mean, it's Blaze. He's not, he's not gonna die. <laughs> Romy can die, though. Gets pulled out by Anduin. Trap onto Junkrat. He should be fine. Top side, Joanna gets... Bullied out. Ah, oh, they're really trying to cap this. It's so hard, guys. The lick was good. Loop onto... Who is it? Darker. Huh? He is still alive for now. Maybe Imperius. Has a schlong in one second. Is he gonna go for it? Gets knocked away by Aurel. And uh, what I just said about this tribute goes exactly the same on this side. It's very, very hard to steal. You kind of need a kill. Maybe two. And good positioning around it. Promi has fantastic stall, Blaze has even better stall, like Johanna actually with two blinds. It's it's kinda hard to just get it. They are looking. They have loop very, very soon, so Junkrat is in immense Danger gets looped. Maybe he's fine. Yeah, he's fine. We fucked up the combo. Holy chicken dodging everything, of course. He knew exactly. Actually, he I mean, he was pretty far already, right? But they did get the loop off. Imperius might get a solo kill here. The Haka very low. Gets the knockback. What about Imperius now, though? He needs to skill level 10! Talent available! Level 10! He's fine. Everything calculated. Didn't need the level 10 either. Is he gonna go for abduct or shield? He's thinking. He's reading. He's uh, considering the options. He's actually staying because he wants to contest this. He went for the shield. Once again, Chromie and Blaze have infinite stall on this position. It's very hard to just cap it. So you probably have to fight for it. We see even if you block the Chromie, there's a junk, um, a blaze. Mala is uh, split again. Coming in now. Less shield. Light bomb is missing. Daka is kind of deep, but I think he's fine. Aurel healing is good for now. The, the bunker is better though. Lick, it's a good one. They can kill. Can they? Yes, they get a kill. What's rough though? Blaze gets pulled out, but he might be dead. No, he's alive. And uh, Vala is gonna fall here. We still had the Aegis, by the way. Romy trying to solo kill the Varian. Doing good damage. Wait, Aurel is... Uh, Aurel is on the walk! Aurel! Ay -ay -ay, where did you go? Are you fine, right? <laughs> uh, maybe not. <laughs> oh, yo, yo, Aurel. She's trying to run to heal the tanks that are up here. No, 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 no. You ping your tanks and you tell them good luck. You cannot try to walk through three heroes. You can only do that if you play something like Blaze. He doesn't give a fuck. Uh, we could have saved Vala with the Aegis. I think then uh, they win the fight. They, get the tri they did get the tribute though. So they have two out of three and the next one top left. Looking for the Haka. He sniffed them out as well though. Varian walked into the bush. Did they see him? Yes. Nice leg. Nice pull. Blast shield is big as well. Aurel is in trouble. She alt Rs just in time actually. She has one big heal. Then she gets looped back. Can't get the next heal off. Blaze gets booped in. Is that good or bad? He doesn't have his E, so it's probably very good. The Imperious Schlong on two again! He gets trapped though, he's trapped! And silenced! Team is going on to different targets! Some people are hitting Blaze! Even though Imperious was deep among four heroes and silenced. 
Ah, uh, and now again the Chromie in position to stall. Blaze, full HP again. Lake gone to Anduin, that's good, but uh, is Varian there? Yes, gets the taunt. Do we have anything? Imperius is going in, so we have him. Trying to peel for his Anduin, he goes down. Objective has been capped. Bottom, mid and top, of course. Getting pushed by the Terrors. was a good lick to start the fight, huh? Because we got the lick and then it got a bit chaotic. Mostly because the lick was on the Anduin. He's the one that would save others. So Imperius felt like he need has to step up. Maybe he didn't, by the way. Maybe he didn't need to step up. Maybe his Anduin would have waddled out of there. They lost mid fort. They might lose bottom fort. Wait, Blaze got boss done. They see it. Varian is coming. Blaze does have a bunker, though. He's hard to kill. The fort is still alive. Very low, though. So we can kill the fort. Schlong hits on Aurel. Johanna bless shielding her own fort. A massive da- Oh my god, they're all stacked up! Massive damage by everyone. Blaze E on three. Chromie smells on everyone. The front line goes down. Aurel was part of the three man. They did get the fort, but holy shit was that painful. They are half a level down after they had the objective. Blaze gets bumped in. Has a loop, uh, has a pull from uh, Anduin though, of course. In fact, maybe Blaze could have tried to go for the Junkrat. That hero is uh, not very fun. Loop is off cooldown right now. Uh, on cooldown, sorry. 10 more seconds. They are danger pinging her. It is close, like it's almost up, so you better respect it. This fort is gone, by the way. You cannot defend it. You should start getting the soak, mid and top. We cannot... Uh, I mean, I think we shouldn't try to defend bottom. They are kind of trying. It's playing with fire. There's a bless shield, there's a loop. And there's level 16. It will sprout before you know it. Darker waiting. The next minion wave. There's a hard camp, there's an easy camp. We are not level 16 though. What are we... Ooh, we are pinging the... Wait, someone pinged... Someone pinged the hard camp here. Vala Aurel are starting it. Imperius is close. They're kind of split as well. No one knows about the positioning of anyone. Holy chicken checking out the... Var Wait, Imperius might die if he... <laughs> Does he know there's five heroes at his hard camp? <laughs> well, now he knows. And he gets absolutely destroyed. There was uh, five boys waiting for him. We have the, the shield break as well, once he presses his ult. Mostly gonna be used for Johanna's D. And I mean, it turned out was a good call. Kinda crazy. You only live once. But it worked out fantastic. They got a whole fort out of it. And they basically didn't lose anything on the map, because bottom fort was already gone. Mid and top. Still standing, and they caught up in XP. So we 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 could have right. So Chromie, wait, let me hear this one right. We had the we have technically a vision tool, but Imperius kind of did respect right. He was he was pretty far away, but there was five fucking heroes running into him, and no one of his teammates close enough, because he like he queued backwards. He got his ult off. The Arca borrowing gets trapped. Maybe Blaze done on it. Good E by the Arca. Taunt onto Johanna. The Lick as well. Johanna gets a shield broken. Broken, I mean. Oh, the Blast Shield plus the Chromie Burst. Vala just disappearing. Isolation missing. Blaze is low. Joke's on you. He's fucking inside the bunker. There's a Chromie trap. Got destroyed though, the whip! The whip! To kill the Varian and uh, the Janna. Can't kill your teammate. Loop. Just to get the CDR while killing someone else. 3v4, Aurel has no energy and Imperius is coming. Look at him. 3, 2, 1 and the Schlong. Ah! Uh, 
Okay. <laughs> he's dead, guys. He's dead. We need a good Aurel whip to get out of here. Wait, maybe we don't need to get out of here. Blaze, he missed! Looks exactly like my Blaze. I'm ready for it. Nice Chromie trap. Do we have a W? No. One second off. What is happening on bot lane? Hard camp is kinda washed up. Chromie got taunted. Anduin has 10 seconds for a pull. No fort, by the way. So we need to flee. There's no, no fallback at this point. Very, very chaotic fight. The only chance is won the fight without Vala participating because she got blown up very, very early. But it was a Pepega fight. Very chaotic. Level uh, 19. For both teams, kind of. Small XP lead. But I promised you a level 20 on Garden, right? So... Relax. Wait for the next tribute. It's on the left side. It could be something they... The boss babies want to skip. Ooh, we are walking into territory. We are scouting, though. With a uh, banner. Easy camp. There is a easy camp pushing on top, though. We kind of want to defuse it before we play for this. We might not want to play for this, though, if we are the boss babies. Because we are behind and soak. If we walk there and it's not clean, then we are 20 versus 19. And Blaze uh, has to clean up this anyways. I think it's fine. Like, you're gonna... Like, the next tribute will then decide a lot of things. Doesn't necessarily have to be lethal. The next tribute, that is. But it's for sure a big one. Actually, now that we soak top, we are basically 20 same time. And we get the heart. Jana was showing bottom. They know. They know Jana was showing bottom. They are scouting. Don't get on the point in time, but Imperius actually messed up his Q. Ooh, nice stun on the blaze. His E is still up though. Bunker gets used. Riptire gets stunned by Jana's blessed shield. Darker maybe. If he's sharking, he might get one. Oh, they see him. The Anduin at least checking the bush. What's that level 20 Riptire? No, he has cannonballs. Oh, the Moonwell. Look at the secret tech. Clicking on the Moonwell. And the opponent's actually walking up into the base, kind of. They have a hard camp behind them, but the Moonwell might make the difference here. Aegis goes out. Aurel is lower self. Okay, no one dies. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Big lick. Oh, Blaze goes down. The loop is a double loop. We are currently hitting not too many heroes with it. Imperius has to turn around, misses the Q, goes down. And this is going to be a free objective. 17 minutes in, level 21. Three heroes are down. The Moonwell, guys. Don't push into the Moonwell. It's uh, unfair. And we... I mean, we used Splash Shield here, right? We didn't get a fight. Chromie does a lot of damage. Riptire to... Damage Chromie a bit. Can they end? I feel like they're gonna get one shot randomly by Chromie. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm worried. There's a mid one pushing as well, by the way. Top one is at the core. What about Valas 20? What is this? Storm of Vengeance! The core drops very quickly though. Junkrat gets saved by Aurel for now. The core is low. They're getting polymorphed! A four-man polymorph! I've never seen this before. They are still fine, I think. The core is very low. Blind on Vala. Oh, they got the job done though. Oh my god. The pull into the polymorph. <laughs> Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> oh, imagine you lose because of that. Was it three or four heroes? It looked like four. Maybe only three were in. Ah, uh, job's done, though. Core's down. Only chance one zero here. Anduin, the only one. Not dying. Oh, wait, sorry. And Chromie. I was blind. 
Wait, so what, wait, what is, uh, what is this exactly? Ah, okay, okay, okay. Maybe that's, uh, how they got the core. Burn notice. It was burning them. A pretty nice game, though. Mm, I think Imperius pick looked a bit underwhelming at the end, right? I think he had one very good fight, but in most of the others it looked a little bit underwhelming. Uh, we also did not have a very good light bomb carrier. Like, we are very melee heavy. I mean, uh, it depends actually. Johanna, like, if she gets a good condemn and you have the light bomb on her, it's good, or, good enough already. Or after the bless shield, you can use it on her because she's going to run in. But yeah, pretty nice game. I can uh, adjust my overlay now, guys. Please, uh, please play on the same side, though. Can you guys do that? That would be amazing. Wait, team left. Look at this. Boom. One, zero. Uh, please stay on the same sides, though. Wait, I'm, I'm gonna do the caldo otherwise and remind you. <laughs> uh, it's it's a best of five, I think. And I mean, at the very end, Vala didn't need to outrange the core, right? She was merely in, inside the core anyways. Like, she walked in all the way. <clears throat> so the extra range wouldn't have done anything. Because she didn't play outside the core range to poke it down. Or, like, siege it down. They were very all-in anyways. They could smell the blood. And they were going for it. And uh, it was actually, even with the big polymorph, it was still like kind of clean because like Vala was low, but she was still shooting. And then the, the boys that were polymorphed, once they get back, they can also do a few more auto attacks. So it was, it was actually, uh, was fine. All right. Looks like everyone is in. Essence acquired. <clears throat> They're changing the crown real quick. That's good as well. Zoom 32. Yo, Trebogard, danke schön. Willkommen zurück. 32 months. You're welcome. And thanks for the support, man. Goes both ways here. Glad you enjoy it. Teams, uh, I think, are ready. Oh, wait, I wanted to check some profiles, right? Let's see, this is the Aurel, for example. Oh, it's actually Aurel main, Diamond 4. Uh, this was the Blaze. He is in placements. Did he play any Storm League? Diamond 1. Uh, this was the Vala. Plat 3. This was the Johanna. Plat 3. Um, this was the Anduin. Gold tree, it says. Wait. Oh, yeah. So we have a, we have a mix, actually. Pretty big range of Storm League ranks. Looks like they need a minute. Wait, wait, wait. So while they need a minute, I will open up Sven's stream real quick. How's it looking? Level 10 versus 10, guys. Team Sweden versus Team Sweden. Or Avatar.
That's uh, the decider match. The Nations Cup, by the way. Team Germany will also have decider matches. There's two, there's three Team Germany signed up. O obviously, only one is gonna get a slot. Oh my god. Okay, they're ready. Good luck, have fun. Let's go, boys. Dragon Shire. All right. Dragon Shire, second map, best of five. Only chance was boss babies. It's a 1-0. Uh, no, I think I'm good, Hogger. Thanks, though. It's fine. It's fine. We leave it like this. But it, it it's fine. I give you a heart, though. We just leave it like this for now. Uh -huh. Dragon Shire. So, uh, could be a Rexa priority, maybe, for some of the teams. Definitely a map where you could consider it. Ogre again on the menu. So is Brightwing. We did see both of them getting banned though. Maybe they stay consistent with that. Starts with the Brightwing ban. I mean, you can play Vala Auril on this map as well. I mean. And then you, you play around bot lane. Maybe they would. Would you think they want to ban Vala? Yeah, they actually do. It's quite interesting because I feel like it wasn't necessarily the Vala that they lost to, but the hero did get first picked, and maybe just taking away because it's it's the Vala in conjunction with the Auril, right? So both got their comfort pick. Maybe they know how to play on these. So maybe if you take away the Vala, causes a bit more distraction. It will mean, though, that there's a lot of good meta heroes open for first pick. <laughs> yeah, Chromia had a decent game, so getting rid of the Chromia I think is fine. Second ban. Johanna. Interesting, because we, we play Johanna ourselves. Hogga first pick. As I said, there's a lot of good meta heroes in once the buns are not used for them. I mean, Hogga is a hero that if you play him well, he's gonna look very powerful, but things can also go very wrong on that one. Anduin once again. The Haka instead of Blaze this time. For the boss babies. Junkrat is in, by the way. And he, yeah, we pick him. I think that is pretty good. It's going to be the bot anchor, most likely. And they picked the Aurel. We did check the profile of Faust, and uh, Aurel was most played, so... I think this ban, here the Vala. Maybe you don't ban Vala, maybe you ban Aurel. And then... You achieve the same. But better, maybe. But I don't really know these players too well, right? Like in terms of player uh, hero pools. Like I would need to see a bit more. Ray main ban. Yo, Eric, thank you very much for the 41. Welcome back. Much appreciated. Is it best of three? No, I think it's best of five. Pretty sure it's best of five. <laughs> And yeah, keep in mind we have a bit longer delay today because we are casting and these guys are playing in the playoffs. NG ban, once again a light bomb carrier. It's honestly kind of 
much. What they were maybe lacking last game, like the Anduin didn't... I mean, he got value, but he could have gotten so much more, I think. Yogi! Thank you very much for the Prime sub. Welcome. Enjoy your stay. Muradin and Hanzo. So Muradin, very, very good on Dragonshire. It's a tank with mobility. And on Dragonshire, you... If you fight around the objective, or if you go from one lane to another, for example, from mid to bottom, there are the trees in the way. Being able to jump over the trees, being able to jump into the shrine, very, very useful. Much better when, uh, instead of like walking around it, things can escalate with a tank like Muradin. And Anubarak is basically the counterpart of it. He has just as much mobility. Obviously, he's squishier, but... He brings Cocoon later on. And we see triple melee this time from Onichance and they pick Atanis. So if he doesn't get his Vala, he's like, Atanis is my hero, guys. Is that... <laughs> I mean, then the Vala uh, was maybe pretty good. And we see uh, both teams with triple melee here. Feuerrabe getting onto De Haka this time. Harold. So Harold seems to be the main offlane. He played the Blaze last game. He's on the Lorek this time. Is he even on the offlane though? Because you want your Dehaka there, I think, so you can borrow down. So I guess Blaze... Uh, I think the Lorek is gonna be... Like... It's so weird. Mid to bottom? <laughs> I don't know exactly. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, so the Alexander, he is uh, Vala and Grey main, main. Okay, I mean, yeah, he picked Atanas, which looks a bit odd to me. I did see some good performances of Atanas lately. I'm still not, I'm not sold on the hero, but man, like if people have a good game on it, he can be very strong. Like blind into this composition is pretty good. Like blinding the Haka is good because he doesn't get CDR on his lick. Blinding Lorik, he has fat auto attacks. Blinding Hanzo, pretty good auto attacks. So, could be useful. If you go the laser, though, and you could use it on Anduin, maybe. Alright, map 2, guys. 1-0. For the only chance on the left side. Holy Chicken on Junkrat, Faust on Auriel, Princess on Anubarak, Alex. Playing the Atanis and Aletis on the Hogger. And on the right side, the Boss Babies. Harold on Leoric. Feuerrabe playing the Dehaka. Chenli, Anduin. Fluttershy on Hanzo and Kane. Or Kane. It's probably a French pronunciation, huh? On Muradin. Good luck, have fun by everyone's smiley faces. Let me go full Five, screen. Four, three. Globes on Anubarak. Perfect storm on Muradin. Atanas is uh, stacking as well. And swap him into the trap. Oh, he tried to swap him into the trap. Junkrat gets the trap anyways. Do we have follow-up? Yes. Forcing the Anduin pull. That's uh, pretty useful already. You have to get it out of the system anyways. And Atanas has a date with Muradin here. Together with the whip of Auril. Auril needs to be careful though. She's running into Hanzo and Daka. Hanzo jumping over. Daka has a lick. He lands it. And Auril goes down. We had a similar mess misstep on the first map where Auril slightly got lost in the rotation. Similar issue here. And uh, wait, wait, wait. So it is Leoric top and Daka is playing. Which fits to the roles last game. Harold was the offlane, and Feuerab played the third melee, like the more aggressive in the four-man. So they stick to the roles they have, I guess, in the team. And, I mean, there are a lot of bushes around. Like, it's not bad for the Arca to wiggle around here. Like, you do get the buff constantly. Hanzo, by the way, uh, auto-attack build. Junkrat is fine. 
Oi, oi, oi. Hogger has a weird spin here. Which means both shrines have been taken. The, the wave is a bit lost as well. Atana is considering to fight or soak. He is uh, auto-attacking Lorik. And we have a very aggressive maneuver on bottom during the hard camp. Which I like, by the way. Just because the portals are glowing doesn't mean you get the dragon. Because if we go into their vision... I mean, right now Anubarak is showing, but... Usually... There's gonna be a hero here, and if you have no ki no kill pressure on the hero, you cannot cap the fucking dragon, right? Because he's gonna he's gonna fool you. It's like stalling last second, and he's gonna wiggle in once, try to auto attack you, and so on. So I think making sure that one has to hold mid and you get something else is uh, pretty useful already. Atanas is taking the towers. He's one hit, one hit away from going down. He does live though. Perfectly calculated. Junkrat gets pushed in big time on bottom. He already used his boop. He got some of the hard camp in here. But he's gonna lose his wall. On top, his team is doing a fantastic job. And maybe they can kill the Arka. No, they missed the stun. The other one did hit. But I think that's too little too late. Anubak is considering to help bottom. And Junkrat did a good job at stalling them. He only lost his wall while on top. Kind of the heroes are dying. I mean, to be fair, Atanas, I mean, Atanas was dying, right? But he got out. He got out. He's going in again. Getting the Laura kill, and this is really, really good for the only chance. Getting a full fort while kind of defending bottom. No, absolutely defending bottom. Yaka might be dead as well. Stun by Aurel into swap by Atanas. Goes down. Oh, yeah, this is nasty. Now they're even... Playing for this hard camp. So why did it go so wrong? I think... Taking this hard camp was good. But we probably want to help our top lane afterwards. With our range carry. Instead of pushing bottom. I think that was the biggest issue. Oh, these are Tana swaps. <laughs> He's like flying around. Oga. Oh, he has no... Co Actually, he had his D up. He could have eaten a piece of meat. I don't know if that would have saved him, but... Gotta try. So now, Lorik has his hack. He lost his whole fort, though. It's kind of, kind of rough. Junkrat setting up. It's very hard to kill in this position. He has a trap and his boop already underneath his feet. If he gets, like, Aurel can whip him. Ah, yeah, yeah, Aurel uh, getting stuck. Speaking of Aurel, needs to be careful. Missed the whip. Missed the storm ball, though. And the lick is on Atanis. He, she goes down anyways, though. And I think Atanis will share the faith of dying here. Another nice lick. Two in a row. The big ones. Ogre is able to clear up the hard camp and the wave. Mostly because it's only Lorek pushing. And actually, the boss babies, if we look at the experience, they almost have level 10. Let me check real quick. Oh no, Anubarak fucked up. Can he run out of here? Yeah, he's fine, he's fine. Level 10 though, I've been locked in. Nope. Oh, I think he has E very soon. The arrow lands though. Can he E out? Oh, the stun lock. Too long. They used a lot of stuff, though, but they got him. Can they maybe invade? Because this is so greedy, right? They're not level 10 and they lose, lost their tank. Muradin, maybe he can jump in. No. The trap is gonna ruin his luck. Uh, what was I talking about? I don't remember anymore. Ah, yeah, I wanted to check XP soak. But then I realized it didn't look very interesting, so... Let's forget about that. Level 10s have been locked in anyways. Hanzo. Junkrat trying to insta-punish with a Riptide. I kind of like the idea. No one was ready though for it. Even though his boop was good. Muradin got his jump interrupted. Hogger with a massive shockwave. Hitting almost two heroes. Gets the kill on Muradin anyways. Anduin once again. Zero deaths. Walking... Does he have zero deaths? Yeah. Walking out of there.
Oh no, not my Aurel again. Ah, not my Aurel again. <laughs> Goes down once more. The bad boys, the big boys are taking the easy camp away. It's not gonna do much. Uh, if you defend it, if you don't defend it, it's actually super value because it kills the fort instantly. But if you defend it, it's not gonna do much. And it's very easy to defend because it's kinda in your base already. But I think you get what I'm trying to say. Anduin checking bottom. Or maybe he's telling them to do it. Not sure. Top lane is Lorik. I don't think we want to gank Lorik with three heroes and then not get him. It's painful. Hogga is uh, once around the globe. Hard camp has been started. Holy chicken is around here. Needs to be careful though. Did he see him jump? Maybe. Even if he did, his team is a uh, cross map. Level 13. Not quite there for the only chance. The boss babies are setting up a trap. Very nice. The lick first. The Muradin stun afterwards. Not overlapping. This is uh, XXL. Oh, the arrow lands. Muradin Stormbolt. Nightbomb is gonna miss though. Auriel saves him for now. Junkrat is very, very low. Gets another heal. This time the Stormbolt does miss. Junkrat though goes down to the Dehaka. Dehaka has another lick. And an isolation. Double stun by Muradin. What is going on here? These guys are pumping. Oh, one auto attack. Oh, what? What's that? Was it 18? I think 18 HP. So low. Yet so far from getting the kill. Hogger. Unstoppable. Leoric is gonna make sure they get the dragon. This time, the dragon play is correct. You made sure that you got enough kills. No one can control this bush because the last time you've seen them, they were dying on bottom. Even if Anub somehow made it in there, it's actually dangerous because uh, four heroes are gonna be there to punish him. Because no one needs to babysit bottom shrine, right? Because So everyone can walk to mid. Because once again, the last time we saw the opponents, they were bottom keep. Cocoon on Anduin. Atanas uh, blinds the Cocoon. And then decides to run into the Anzo. Gets him. Fat auto attacks. Lorek has AA built. He's... Uh... Wait, where's the tire? <laughs> Wait, hold up. He's the Junkrat. Sending the tire across the map. Wait, he licked the... Oh, he licked the beetle. Was dancing with it for for a moment. There's a massive top wave. We need to catch it. Hogga knows about it and is going for it. They got a kill on Hanzo. Kind of juicy because you reset his qu uh, quest. And you were behind in XP. So getting the kill is extra value. Atanis. It's fine. Lorik got the hard camp. Yeah. Double traps by Junkrat, by the way. How many stacks of Atanas, Atanas have? 150. Or almost 160. And 20, 21 globes. So double trap for Junkrat. We will see how useful it will be. Because they kind of lost map control already. So for him to get into good positions to set up traps is not the easiest. He does uh, scout out the Muradin though with one of it. Lorek used his E. Ogre gives him a whack. Ogre needs to be careful though. Okay. I feel like his team is very uh, indecisive right now because we, we... What is... Like top is a nuclear bomb. We started the fight on bottom. The Haka will be able to borrow in. Maybe. He borrowed into the mid fort, actually. Three man arrow. A uh, mid bush, I mean. Hanzo gets swapped by Atanis. Atanis is gonna run after him. Hanzo used his D, so right now. Might be rough to get out, and he blows up to the Aurel Aegis. Don't get that too often. Kill on Lorik as well. And they do lose top fort, but they win the fight. One of the kills is uh, not too valuable because it's Lorik. He's gonna respawn quickly if. He stops being AFK and uh, uses the suction. There we go. 
the other one though, Hanzo, once again. Uh, hold up though, what happened to the pulls? We did have a pull here. Just, uh... Oh, Hanzo was a rip. They might try to swap the Anduin out here. Tarnas has been very aggressive so far. Never mind. Lorek is behind. He got trapped by the Junkrat. That's juicy. Hmm. Experience is very even. Hogger is top and they know it. Nice whip. Anubarak. Oh, the Entomb. The love, the love bug. The beetle. Being exactly on the edge, getting pushed out to the bot side. This uh, is the third hard camp, I think, on bottom that the boss babies are taking. The Haka brawling the top one. It's kinda dangerous, though. Is Muradin is anchoring the the tri bush? Okay, the Haka is fine. He's so fast, right? And the 16e, the 16e makes it uh, so that he just scoots out of it. But they had no vision around the top side. Muradin was anchoring towards bottom. There is a hard camp again. In terms of map pressure, I have to say that the only chance are getting. Oh, the, the light bomb! Oh my god, the Aurel whip was even better. The light bomb would have been insane. Now the turnaround. The Haka just dies. Atanis didn't give a fuck. Being cocooned with three people. He loves that. Muradin gets pulled out at least. Oh, the whip was so good. It would have been a three man light bomb. The Aurel whip though. Saying no. In terms of map pressure, look at this though. They're winning the fights, but they are bleeding on the map. This is... Yo, 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 yo. You gotta go, Hogger. Okay, he is going. He is going. This is locking onto the keep. It's a lot of damage. Look at it. Get the dragon, but... Let's say the next team fight you mess something up. They instantly end on bottom. Because it's, it's so weak already, right? Six more seconds for the Arca. I wonder... Yeah, he did get everything off. I entomb. Ah, oh, we missed the storm bolt. Light bomb again getting knocked. This time it does hit though, but this is a weird fight, I think, for the boss babies. Not sure if I like it. It's so chaotic for them. Ah! Oh! <laughs> the Riptire is not done yet. Gets a fat explosion. The fat cannonballs as well. There's a gate though in between. Lorik. Trying to get them 20. And the, the, the Haka pick, I have to say. Not quite feeling it. Can they end through mid? I don't think so. I think they get the keep and then. I mean, if they get kills here, they can. But I think. I think we are relaxing after the keep. We should kill the keep though. Come on. Okay, there we go. Yeah, very nice. Junkrat one shots the hard camp. Jumps out. We do have silence entomb from now on. Now, if Atanas gets entombed like that, I think he actually dies. Oh no, Anduin. Relax, relax, brother. They are right next to you. Oh, you didn't see them yet. <laughs> I think he is Omega Dead. Uh, arrow on three, but. Support already dead. Hanzo is trying to go get the solo kill on Junkrat. Gets absolutely destroyed though. No. Joke's on you. He's full HP. He's ro running out of here. Oh! The blind clips his ass. Goes down. And can we end the stones? The rocks though. You think the polymorph was a problem? Wait till you see the rocks on this map. Entomb is... Oh, the Arca. Uh, sorry, the Atanas got healed. A big one from Aurel. And I think with that, the core is 100% dead. Because he didn't die and the Loric died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is free core. 2-0. The only chance. Honestly, just winning by team fighting, right? They ignore kind of everything what's going on on the map. They just... Uh, let's Let's fight and win fights. And honestly... Can be a good win condition. 
if the opponents are giving it to you, right? We, we, for example, we could have said, relax team, I'm the hacker, I'm gonna keep pushing either top or bottom while the others are showing and brawling you. Like, just relax. If they go on you, we use Anduin pull. But we borrowed in, right? Like, we wanted to fight as well. So they took the fights, but they didn't win the fights. Hmm. Atanas. Look good, no? I mean, good enough at least. Junkrat top damage. Hanzo on the other side. I don't. Did we finish the globes? Probably right at the towards the end, because we had twenty-one at some point. Yeah, we probably got it done. Anduin, one death this time. When he died, the game was instantly over. He was uh, unkillable before. But when they caught him once, it was go next. <laughs> it was a go next angle. Mm. Two zero means next map is potentially. The last one. Oh, it's Volskaya Foundry. We are in for a treat, guys. We are in for a treat. Uh, yes, Hanzo had uh, auto attack and giant killer. 16. Missing some players, by the way. Wait, what? Ah, we need... Uh, they're saying they need five minutes. The Aurel Whips, yeah, the Aurel Whips were indeed pretty big last game. <clears throat> Reverse sweep needed. Yeah. If they want to win, they need to win three in a row. What server is this tournament played on? Uh, European server. Uh, still missing some people. Let me wait a moment. This one, guys, this is what we are. This is the match and this is the bracket. Looks like everyone joined. 2 0 for the only chance. Volskaya coming up next. A map where the objective might kill you. A map where if you get the late game objective might win you the game <laughs> might win you the game. 
Let's see though, let's see. Seems like they're still seeing me AFK. Yeah, I think we will play a bit of Storm League afterwards and then later on we play Resident Evil again. That's the plan. One of the teams is ready. Alright, alright, alright. Let's go, yeah? So on this map, it's a bit different. Usually... Actually, I mean, we already saw Leoric, right? He's very useful on this map as well. There's some range carries like Vala, potentially... Nazebo, like they scale into late game, while Skya very, very often goes into late game. There, there is things though, but there is games and drafts where you kind of get steamrolled. Like you're not even getting close to level 20. And if you do, you have no structures left. You can't win anymore. The fine line in terms of drafting. They banned Auriel. And they banned Junkrat. So Vala is... They will first pick Vala, right? They did it on Garden. This map is even better for her. Let's see. Maybe they have other plans. Oh, what? Blaze? Really? So, I mean, it's okay. It's okay. Hero is good no matter what. Speaking of Lorek, though, can be a problematic lane, and Lorek. Does scale better into the late game. At least uh, level 20, that is. We see Anduin again. So, three times Anduin. So, I guess he's Anduin main. Um, Holy Chicken will have to play something that is not Junkrat. Faust will have to play something that is not Auriel. But, Vala and Grey main. For the Alexander guy, right? That seems to be his. Favorite range carries, and they can still get the Vala. Like it's and Blaze is very good protection for her as well if they want her. Okay, Grey main. They're switching it up a little bit. Johanna, pretty stable main tank. You also take away the blind. That would be annoying for Grey main. Wait, what about Genji and Rega? We haven't seen any Rega. Like he wasn't contested, not not picked or banned. We see the Genji ban three times in a row on this position. And I assume the boss babies will draft triple melee again, right? It seems to be what what they do. Muradin, Suljen, switching up the range carry. Oyarabe was the flex melee assassin that we seen on Imperius and Dehaka so far. Complete, uh, like D Lucio for example, complete, completely ignored by both teams. I mean, he is hard to play, right? Anna instead of Auriel, and Holy Chicken gets 
Thrall. Hmm. And once again, so okay. So maybe Feuerrabe has like a, a little bit of a strange hero pool. Because once again, he... He kind of fills in a way that you don't see too often. Z I mean, Zarya is, is good with Suljin and can be good with the rest of the team as well. Wait, they are swapping around here. What is going on? Harold is not going to play the offlane. But the Zarya instead. Okay. So, maybe it was a team decision saying Zarya is a very good pick here. I... And uh, let's see, let's see. I'm not 100% sold on it. To the Anna and Johanna. But actually, Blaze Oil for Suljin is very annoying as well. Hmm. I'm not. I don't know about the Zarya pick actually. I feel like it's not very good, but it 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 gives an extra layer of protection for Suljin. I I'm not sure if that's what they needed though. Let's see though. Maybe they plan on giving them the robot and then they kill all. <laughs> yeah, take the robot. Let uh, Johanna and Blaze go in. And then we kill the three boys outside. I swear, the loading screen between these two teams is uh, cursed. Oh, Chen Maybe he disconnected this time. He's very far off. <laughs> Maybe his PC actually said Ripparoo. Never mind. Ah, he did disconnect, but maybe he's back already. Sometimes you have it when you load into the lobby. All right, on the left side, only chance, leading 2-0 in this best of five. Division five playoffs, that is, round one. The bracket, holy chicken thrall, house on Anna, Aletus on Blaze, Princess on Joanna, and uh, Alexander on the gray main. And on the right side, the boss babies, Harold. Playing the Zarya, Feuerrabe on Leoric Chenli, Anduin Fluttershy on Suljin, and uh, Kane on Muradin once again. Just like last game. Crash Lightning, actually. Don't see the Lorik right now. No, they do. The place was already running to bot. On this map, uh, item control is very important. So you do this one at minute one, then 15 seconds, and the healing camp spawns at the same time. It's a bit takes takes you a little bit longer to to get it though. Usually, you will have a pretty obvious... I mean, sometimes the, the, the fight around the healing camp is going to be uh, very close. But most of the time, there's going to be one team that is able to brawl it off. I think... I mean, Lorik kind of sucks on the spot fight, but the other four heroes, I think, are very good at brawling it off. Especially if Zarya has energy. So if... I think if Zarya has energy, they win this fight. If it comes to it. But let's see. It's also possible that both teams kind of ignore it.
Both did the turret, by the way. <clears throat> Ooh, nice sleep dart. The problem is Thrall used his root already. So much damage anyways, though. The blind almost killing the Sulchin. <laughs> I think if he didn't press his E, he was maybe dead. The blind. It was very close. Zarya is uh, going to base. She was uh, top and there were four opponents on top. And uh, no, none of his teammates close enough. Thrall has a flank on Anduin here. Which forces them back. They have to go back anyways if you tank the minion wave. It's too much. And now because the Zarya is dead and Blaze actually arriving in mid first. They are playing for the healing camp. And I thought... This is going the other way with the Zarya. Like early game brawl with the shield and the energy, but I mean she was dead. They got it before she was back. And Leoric technically should be ahead of Le uh, Blaze in, in rotation. Because he kind of wins the one we won with a suction. This is what it is though. They don't see the Muradin, so they. They pink this bush, thinking Muradin is in there, but he's on the right side. Now he's showing. Can't really kill though. Even if he hits the stun there, it's uh, not enough damage until Sojin arrives. So the easy camp timing is better for boss babies, by the way, because it's during the objective phase. Not the—I mean, <laughs> the objective phase on this map. It's kind of a joke, more or less, but. You get my point. If people actually fight for it, the easy camp really hits the wall. Turrets up again. We kind of want to rotate down. To get them. Is Chana killable? No. They might get the wall though. But uh, got a tower. Fresh lightning. Ooh, we have a Greyman stacking as well. Greyman actually stealing the camp here. Lorik has no fucking clue what is happening. His team is uh, getting a kill on top. And that's nice. And it's kind of what they... Oh my god, triple... Everyone has a turret down here. So, the, I mean, the kill makes it... So it doesn't feel as bad. But it was really bad for them. Rayman going for the solo kill here. Trying at least. Sultan did make it out. They used the, the healing emitter though. Thrall that is. In return they got a turret out. So one item for another one. That means we still have two turrets. And level 10 is very very close. Level 10 is really, really close. We need to be careful. Now level 10 has been locked in. I guess these two are on the easy. They don't know it though. Boss babies. They did run away. And they will claim level 10 in a few seconds as well. There's a minion wave. Maybe we want to catch. Yeah. No one has uh, played for this at all, right? Like 15%. No one really has capped it. Longer than uh, accidentally walking over it. It's done. Rayman is flanking. The light protects you. The blaze bunker getting him out of the end tomb. Because of the collision size. Blaze missing his stun. Gets out though. At the movement speed from his level 1. And we saw end tomb and expulsion zone. Together. But there was only the, the big boy in. And we saw him not carrying. Zarya used both shields. The flank is in. Do they land any CC here? Bless they did hit the sleep, but they can't kill. Blessed obviously was already on cooldown from the brawl in mid. Stormbolt missing. 
who Thrall just missed his root, just like uh, I always do. Calling a big one and then hitting nothing. Sleep that lands again though, the Ana. Providing some setup, but... Ah, she's gonna get into... Never mind. Entomb is on cooldown. They want the Anduin, they're pinging the Anduin. Something is happening on, on bot side as well. Anduin gets the shield from Zarya and his light bomb is massive there. Ah, Johanna! Oh, yo, yo, oh no! Missed the flashlight and dying to the towers. And on bot side, the blaze actually goes down to the little maneuver that we saw while the Anduin got dove in at. And who needs the Entomb? You just fucking kill the Anna! Without attacking her. And this escalated big time. Johanna killing herself. Not accepting that Anduin was out. Or, I mean, if you hit the flashlight, he's dead, but... Both things went wrong there. This was a good fight for the boss babies who have been struggling in the in the best of five in terms of team fights, right? I feel like in terms of macro, they have done a lot of good things. But the team fighting is uh, usually where they started losing grip but this time was it was a chaotic team fight though muradin suljan running at a blaze your own support yes they got onto him very good zarya shield plus the light bomb and then he lifts on one one percent and you get a freebie with johanna and the blaze that you worked for and then you get the anna on the on the way out light bomb onto thrall he can't get a Sundering off. Doesn't even need to. Suljen, unkillable. By the way, Sundering could be enormous here. Ah, it only hits one and into the wrong direction. Too greedy. The Entomb though. Three people and the towers are locking onto them. Johanna goes down to Leoric. Muradin jumps in. It's very low HP. He's fine though. Suljen doesn't have his ult right now. He is looking fine though. Keep in mind. Oh, no, 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 no. We relax, bro. That was very far off the threshold. Keep in mind, both the shield and the Anduin, if they are around, gonna keep the Suljin alive. This is still the first objective, by the way. Just as a reminder. <laughs> So how are we doing? 23 stacks, he got his uh, root quest as well. We have a lot of Vorgan stacks, Suljin doing fine as well. Rayman is in trouble. He gets his E off and he makes it. Ha, what? Did you see that? Did he fucking eat over the expulsion zone? Huh? How did he not get stuck there? I ha I am confused. That looked That looked weird to me. It is what it is though. Calculated bait. Surgeon baiting as well. He does have Tasdingo, he's gonna get it off. He is very hard surrounded though. Anduin could have maybe pulled him out? No, 30 seconds. No way of pulling him out then. And, uh... I mean, it was probably not a bait. Just didn't expect everyone to be around. Blaze, though. Gets <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, really. <laughs> Muradin Zarya running at him. He's like, guys, come on. I'm gonna clear the wave while you guys hit me, and then I go to the other wave. I don't care. None of the forts down, by the way. We got a wall. Second, wait, hold up, Lorek. Gets run down. Wait, Anna is deep, no? No? Ah, oh, the sleep dart, though. Sleep dart was good. Thrall is on the healing. Okay, okay. Now we are grouping again. 16 versus 16. Turrets are up. The Zarya pick so far, not all too juicy. She does have decent scaling though. She gets a cleanse here. You can go rewind, then you have two of these. 
I could also go ult upgrade. Can go Q, but no, she's not gonna go Q on 20. Jana is walking into the turret. Flash shield on 3. Expulsion zone is very strong here on the spot. Zarya. That's why you picked the hero. They did get the item, but they are dying. They had to get out after the Dororak died. We had two pulls. This is uh, a bit of a problem. Them thinking... Like, they got the cap, right? And then Lorik dies. I think they need to get out then. Pull the Zarya and hope that your Muradin has uh, long enough legs. Do we have net, by the way? No. And uh, Thrall is not in danger here. And this is the first fort of the game. Yo, no one... These guys are legit ignoring the robot. Like, no one is even trying to get it at all. They're completely ignoring it. Like, Lorik is like, here, guys, I got the suction build. Please, please go into the robot. I'm gonna kill it within two, two drains. But, uh, no. Fuck off. Looking for a kill on top. Jana has blessed shield. Actively looking. What? Ah! Too deep. Greyman. He can walk it out. Yeah. The Sun Ring this time very big. Causing confusion. Muradin doesn't even get his avatar off. Suljin getting pulled out this time, but... Ah, it's a disaster. It's an absolute disaster. Greyman is munching. He is... Uh, I think he was nano boosted there as well. Absolutely destroying them. Need to get the avatar off though in that moment, I think. And we kind of like the end tomb. You, I mean, you, yeah. I mean, if Greyman is still in human form, he's gonna jump out. Unless there is like CC coming as well. This time it's not only a fort, but top keep. And level 20 versus 18 and a half. Two turrets. And the healing. It's time to play some Dota. We can get three items here. Realistically, we get two items because they will play for their own turret. Oh, we have World Breaker, by the way, on Thrall. I'm ready to see some. Maybe on the Muradin when he jumps? Okay. Ah! It's okay. 20 seconds we try again. Anna used to ancestral healing there. 16. So, they didn't really get anything done. Ah! Zarya, I just wanted to say they didn't get anything done with their level 20s, but then they found Zarya lost. Wait, is she lost? No, she's a... Uh, we are still not 20, though. Flucht! Run, boys! Ah, the next world breaker. It's okay, 20 seconds, we try again. And Zarya might... Oh, no, I think she gets baited. Just run, 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 run. Don't walk in again. Oh, my God. If you die, here they end the game, by the way. Greyman is not gonna fuck around at your core. Oh, three-man root! Lorik and Tomb. Maybe Greyman is dead. I think he's dead. No, yes! Oh, he goes down. It's a very good end Tomb this time. What? What? Uh, uh, what? Holy chicken! What are you... You were world breakering this thing? I mean, you definitely hit that one. 20 seconds and we try again. They stayed alive, they lost the Zarya, but the Entomb, and I guess the greed, the greed of running here. Because they got hit by the fort. And I mean, it was close, Greyman almost got out, but... Not enough, not enough. So, what do we do about the robot? Anna is like, guys, should I 
Should I start channeling or? <laughs> I don't. I'm not so sure. I mean, we are 17 minutes in. Norek looking for end tomb. Wait, so what did Zarya go on 20? I, uh, she went the, the rewind. Big Taz Dingo. We found. Oh, we missed. He might still get end tomb. He can bunker though. We can kill the bunker and end tomb him. <laughs> we tried, we tried, guys. And they know the thing is at least we traded bunker for end doom, right? This is this is fine, like this is not too bad. Johanna with a big flank coming from the side, looking for the bless shield, walking into three, using condemn first, getting the bless shield. Taz Dingo not being used, world break on two, and it's an absolute destruction. Suljin didn't get anything off. Light bomb onto the Muradin to fly out of there. Oh, what a flank from Jana. And she's saying, guys, follow me. This is uh just follow me. I'm guiding you through. Anna, though! Wait, Yasu... <laughs> That's something that would happen to Yasu as well. Like, like <laughs> left behind. <laughs> it doesn't matter, though. I mean, the core is giga dead. Grey main arrived at the core. He's fully stacked. Well, not anymore, right? But he's gonna rip it. <laughs> The Anna, man. She could have used the turret to tank the keep aggro. Then she would have been fine. I swear, I've seen this uh, happening to Yasu once, actually. <laughs> uh, like something very similar. She was late because she picked up the turret on the on the camp. And Johanna, I mean, Johanna instantly walked core. But, I mean, they didn't need, they didn't really need the Anna. Uh, once again, Anduin, zero deaths. He died only a single time in the whole best of five, by the way. And uh, what did I want to say? Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, zero, exactly. Volskaya comple completely objective less. No one was uh, interested. But congrats, guys. Onichan, 3 0. Winning the first round in their playoff bracket. I think the boss babies, they... They looked good at times. But ultimately, I think just teamfights were better executed by their opponents. On this map, they sometimes had their number, but... At the end of the day... It was not quite good enough. In terms of macro, I think they did a good job, especially map 1 and 2, I think. Team fights were a bit uh, rough, though. There could be could be draft, could be people not hitting certain things when they have to. What a pretty nice best of 5, guys. I'll uh, drop the link one more time. Yeah. Go. So. GG's and... That's and we will uh, dive into Storm League, I think, next. Play a little bit. But first I want to check the results of the Swedish uh, tiebreaker. Are they still playing? Does anyone know? Or did it end 3-0? 